Watch us on YouTube and Facebook. Listen to our podcast and support us on Patreon. Thanks for stopping by. We went from the social compact and contractual theory to utilitarianism, absolute idealism, cronyism, and Marxism. Some even, in the beginning, questioned the theory of sovereignty by the people. Stating, if founded on the principles of consent by the people, what if there is a form of original contract where the people can tacitly reserve the power of resisting the sovereignty, when they find themselves aggrieved with that authority that they have voluntarily entrusted? It has also been said that even though sovereignty found is a great and honorable idea, it has seldom had a place and rarely to its full extent, further suggesting that there must be some other foundation of government admitted. Living our lives as if we are actors on a stage, and all wearing masks is by no means a clear definition of the word person. We are being defined and have been for quite some time, by different authors, disciplines and cultures. Different of course according to time and place. Legal persons are nothing more than a concept, and the natural person is human. Legal persons are only used so that corporations, groups and entities can be recognized in the eyes of the law. This also gives rights to these corporations, groups and entities to exercise their rights, according to common law and the constitution. Other than individuals within these corporations, groups and entities they are not flesh and blood, and they do not have all the rights that the natural person has. A natural person can vote and hold office, where a corporation cannot. A corporation can sue or be sued, as well as own property. Both the natural person and corporations are capable of committing crimes, though corporations do not have to have to appear in court. They are often represented by their attorney on behalf of the corporation instead. According according to interpretation, A person can frame a picture of the world, formulate plans, and can act on those plans. The person in law and philosophy is closely related to citizenship, equality, and liberty, which makes it quite controversial. Being a person is a responsibility, with rights, privileges, protections as well as liabilities. In some cases, the person is considered properties in probate, non-human entities, artificial intelligence, political and legal entities, corporations, and sovereign states. The definition in some cases may even exclude some humans with mental impairments, and it already excludes pregnancy. Throughout time the judiciary has used excuses to avoid the subject of the definition for a person. In some cases stating, it would place the administration of government on the footstool of the judiciary. Saying this to practice judiciary restraint and deference toward the direct legislation process, holding to the premise that the court does not interfere with separation of powers. Time and time again the courts stand behind the 14th Amendment, saying that corporations are groups of individuals united for a common purpose. Also they stand behind the First Amendment, claiming that the courts cannot restrict freedom of speech, with concerns to corporations, political activist groups nor the media. Furthermore, the courts are prohibited from taking property from corporations without due process and proper compensation, yet, can do this to the natural person. All of this is a result of the court's decision that a corporate charter is a contract, and the obligation of a contract cannot be impaired without violating the Constitution of the United States. In general usage person is considered to be a human, but in statutory law, a person can also be a firm, labor organization, partnerships, associations, corporations, legal representatives trustees in both bankruptcy and receivers. Internationally, legal personality is a prerequisite for an international organization to sign international treaties in its name. This is termed as juridical persons, and they become a personality when they are incorporated in accordance to law. The natural person becomes a legal person when the individual is born. Some contest that the person is not interpreted correctly at all according to the analysis of the concept. They believe that the person is directly connected to free will, and is a description of human volition according to the individual's desire. Humans may want to do something, or may not want them to do something. They may want or may not personally a specific thing. These are all according to their capacity of wanting to be different in their preferences and purposes from what they are at that moment in time. Animals also display these desires, 
but what separates them from humans is the ability of self-evaluation. This according to law is what defines a person, not because they're humans, but because rights and duties are attributed to them. This according to lawyers, is what defines the natural person. People who wish to subvert are not terrorists, and they do not wish to destroy bridges or buildings either. Most of them are politicians, diplomats, corporations, journalists, labor unions, and lobbyists. With concerns to time, money and manpower, people that subvert government spend 15% on doing outward harm to society. 85% of their time is spent on subverting their target in the background and behind closed doors. You cannot subvert anything that does not wish to be subverted. Call it subversion or corruption, but the misconception of the term is precisely why it is not even a moral manpower United States, much less a crime at all. It is a two-way street, and the only way to subvert anyone or anything is if this is spent a target. Promises of peace and uncontrollable growth create pacifism. This is to create the illusion that your enemy is not your enemy, but a friend. This with the reduction of spending, trade, and financial aid. Then comes propaganda with a movement, and of course more economic aid to support the movement. Expansion of power and economic control will begin with even more propaganda, which will result in protests, crimes and corruption in the media. Feeling isolated from the rest of the world, and losing confidence in alliances made with other countries will also happen. Soon propaganda about great achievements will begin, and humanitarian aid will be sent to show that the government gives support. If we are a true democracy and free society, it would be easy to understand that we, as a country, have many movements within our country. The moment that all these movements begin to move in the same direction, is the moment that some people would wish to catch hold of these movements and support them until our society's structure collapses. When this happens, these people can create artificial bodies of non-elected officials. Introducing non-elected officials into our society's structure and replacing the old elected body from before. This of course takes away the people's initiative and responsibility, replacing it with bureaucracy. Challenging social issues with concerns of rights versus obligation, resulting in less individual response. Promoting ignorance by manipulating, monopolizing, and discrediting the media with horse race journalism turning journalists into feeble-minded and mediocre snobs, without courage or competition. It is easier to survive that way. They are given the same wages eventually because their performance does not matter. As long as they smile into the camera and do as they are told. Create a sense of alienation through urbanization, stealing land, and affecting the population. Creating arguments between labor and society by disrupting collective bargaining rights. Unions were originally established to create a better working environment and protect the rights of their workers. It eventually brought an end to natural exchange and created an economy that is intertwined and interdependent. So the workers lose because they go on strike and can never catch up because of inflation and time lost on the job. That is even with a 10% increase in salary too. Millions lose out because of the economy and collective bargaining is no longer a part of the compromise. A third party of course has to distribute everything accordingly and the only people who profit are union leaders and corporate billionaires. Antagonizing politicians on both sides of the aisle from within both to create disunity. Assaulting allies further causes a sense of isolation. Through propaganda, mass media, and discrimination, a person's right to sell his labor at his own free will is taken away. Instead of going according to our deeds, believing that what we do is important. We believe that we all should be treated the same. We build our society on that premise under the word equality, yet, equality cannot be legislated according to our own constitution. In the stages of destabilization, labor and employer relations is further radicalized. The legitimacy of demands placed on the worker is accepted. Without the initiative to fight or participation in the decision-making process on the part of the worker, if a bargaining process could be established during the destabilization process, more radicalization is used. Anything that is of value is subverted, until what is perceived is so distorted that the enemy is no longer seen as the enemy. 
It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize society. Destabilization is exactly what it sounds like, the destabilization of decision-making relations, institutions, and organizations. How do people do it? They let the people do it to themselves. Teaching children permissiveness and relativity, instead of what is pragmatic and important. The relationship between teacher and student is frustrated during the destabilization stages, because there can be no compromises. In society, there are many tendencies going in the opposite direction from its basic morals, values and principles. Subversion's main purpose is to take advantage of these tendencies and capitalize on them. Usually through religion, education, social structures, power structures, labor relations, and law enforcement. In the destabilization stage, it is narrowed down to the economy, law enforcement, military, and media, but with the use of radicalization also. This was brought to you by The Strange, The Bizarre, The Unusual, I Like It, on YouTube and Facebook. Listen to our podcast on any of these platforms. Inker, Breaker, Overcast, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, Spotify. Support us on Patreon. And check us out on Discord. All the links can be found in the description below. We thank you for your participation. If you enjoyed please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback.